And so today we're looking at lead code number 494. It's a question called target sum. And so we are continuing on using our backtracking recursive template, our depth first search recursive helper. And we are solving this using that method. And it's the same method that we're using to solve all the other questions in this playlist that deal with permutations, combinations, or subsets. So um, one of the reasons why I chose this is just to show you how powerful this template is because you can solve many, many problems that deal with any of those uh, issues like permutations, subsets, or combinations quite easily by just implementing this template and just filling in the blanks, um, so to speak. But I think it's also really important to know what it's doing under the hood. So we're going to conceptually go over the recursive tree and then we'll go ahead and implement the code and uh, we'll use the template and we'll see how, how effective this is. Okay, so here we're given an integer array nums and an integer target. And we want to build an expression out of nums by adding one of the symbols pop plus and mi uh, minus before each integer num and then concatenate all the integers. For example, if nums two, one, you can add a plus before two and a minus before one and concatenate them build the expression plus two minus one. Uh, we want to return the number of different expressions that we can build, which evaluates to the target. So here we have an array of five ones and our target is three. So output is five because there's five different ways or five different combinations of these numbers in array where if you put a positive or a negative in front of them, that will sum up to the target three. Here, example two, there's only one way we can get one, and that is by the number that's in, in the array. And uh, we have some constraints here that the length of the nums array is going to be less than or equal to 20. Um, and then here, okay, that's going to be 0 to 1,000. Okay, so let's go ahead and build out the recursive tree to kind of show what's going on underneath the template that we're using. And then we'll go ahead and implement the code. Okay, so the idea here is, is we want to do exclude include, okay? And we don't want to, you know, build a string and then convert this to numbers and concatenate it and figure out if this equals three. We don't need to do that. We can just keep a slate variable that's going to just keep a running sum as we build out this tree. And then when we get to the leaf node, we can check, does that, does that running sum equal our target if it does? then we can just go ahead and increment a result counter. So that's the most efficient way to kind of go about this instead of building out a string and doing all that. That'll just take up a lot of space and time as well. Okay, so here we're going to have, we're gonna start with our ith variable. Whoops, uh, let me go ahead and fix this here. I'm just gonna grab this, pull this over here and erase this one here so I can move this around. Okay, so here we're gonna grab our, our ith variable here, our ith value, and what we're gonna say is at this point, we're gonna add or subtract whatever this is to our slate, which is gonna start at zero. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna write uh, positive and negative. Okay, so whatever the value is, on the left we're going to make it positive, on the right we're going to make it negative. So here it's 1, so we're going to add 1 to the slate, and we are going to subtract 1 from the slate. Okay, so now on the first level, our, uh, our running sum is going to be either 1 or uh, minus 1. Our base case will be if i is in the range of nums, okay? So i then increments, we go down the tree, we increment i, pass it in the recursive helper, and now we do the same thing for each one of these nodes, okay? Whatever the slate is, this is one, we're gonna add one, so this will be two, and we will subtract one, which is going to go back to zero. Same thing here, we are going to add one, which will, this will go to zero, or we will subtract one and this will go to minus two. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and increment i again. Okay, and we are gonna pass in, we're gonna go ahead and recursively call all the values on this level of the tree. So here, uh, we're gonna add one, so our running sum will be three, 
we're going to subtract one, so our running sum will be one. Here we're going to add one, so our running sum will be one, and we'll subtract one, so this will be minus one. Same thing here, this will be one, this will be minus one, this will be minus one, and this will be minus three. Okay? All we're doing at each level is we're just adding or subtracting the value that's in I. Okay, and then we're recursively going down the tree. So now we're gonna go ahead and increment I, go to the next level here. I is still in the range of nums, so we're not at our base case. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go ahead and add one and subtract one. Add one and subtract one. Add one and subtract one. Okay, add, subtract, add. Let's see here, this is going to be one, two. This will be zero. This will be zero. This will be minus two. Um, you're gonna add one here, so that'll be zero. And we'll subtract one. This will be minus two. This will be minus two. And this will be minus three, okay? And now we go ahead and increment i on this level, and we go down the tree, okay? Now, we're building this out breadth-first search, but in the actual code, it's actually doing this depth-first search, and I'll, I'll, I'll explain a little bit of that um, uh, once we build out this tree. Okay, so we're still not at our base case. Now we're going to get to our final base case, okay? So we're going to add one here. This will be 5. This will be 3. Now we hit our leaf level here, okay? So we hit 3. And when we hit that leaf level, that base case, we want to check what is in this so far? What is in our running sum? Does it equal our target here? If it does, we want to just go ahead and increment our result. Okay, we have a global result, and we're just going to go ahead and increment that by one. Okay, same thing here. We're going to add one. So this is going to be three. This will be one. And again, we hit this base case here, and we check does this equal the target, or the um, our target is three, not five. So that's my mistake. Let me just go ahead and change this. This is not a five, this is a three. Okay, so it does hit that base case. And what we're gonna do here at three is we're gonna go ahead and increment our, our global result. Okay, and now we here at two, we subtract one. This is going to be uh, one. Here we add one, so this is going to be three again. This goes ahead, we're gonna go ahead and increment our global result to three, and then we're gonna backtrack and move, move on. Okay, so now here, this is gonna to go to one, this is going to go to um, minus one, so on and so forth. So you can see that any time we're hitting a two, we're gonna get a three when we, on the add one. So here, here, and I believe that's it. Okay, so we have we have one, two, three. This is also gonna go down to three. And this is gonna go down to three. Okay? And so we have one, two, three, four, five. So our global result will increment to five and that's what we'll return. And that is, that is indeed the correct answer. So you can see how, how this is forming a tree and how this is working. Now we built this tree out level by level, but in the code, it's going depth for search. It's going to go and build out this part of the tree first, then it's gonna backtrack, pop it off the, the slate, come back this way, come back that way, and it's doing this all depth for search and it's doing it in pre-order, okay? So we're building this recursive tree that's kind of going this way. Okay, so let's think about time and space complexity here. Okay, so if we think about time complexity, well here we have one, right? Let me use, I'll use blue uh, for this. So here we're gonna have one operation here. Now we're gonna have, for each, each node at the root level, we're gonna have two choices, okay? So we'll multiply that by two. Now each one of these nodes here, we're gonna have two choices, so we'll multiply that by two, which will equal four. Now we're gonna have two choices on that, which is gonna equal eight, this will equal 16, and this will equal 32, right? And so if you notice here, how many times are we doing this? We're doing this n times, one, two, three, four, and five, right? So we have n numbers, and we are doing 
2 to the n operations. Okay, so our time complexity here is going to be 2 to the 2 to the n. Because at every level of the tree, we're doing two operations on each node, so it's just going to be it's it's going to be worst case 2 to the n. Now, what about space? Well, because we're keeping everything in a counter, we're not going and concatenating a string and then doing a linear operation. We're just keeping a running sum and keeping a counter. We're, we're hitting constant space on all of that. But we have to remember that we have we're, because we're doing recursion, we do have a call stack. So our recursive call stack, how deep does it go? What is the height of our tree, worst case, at any point during this code? Right? At this point, what is the worst case for the height of the tree? The height of the tree is log n, so it's going to be n numbers, okay? So you can see here, this is going to be the height of our tree, worst case at any point, from the root to the leaf level, and that's n. So worst case on space is that we're at a leaf level, and it's going to be O of n. Okay? And so the height of the tree is log n relative to the, uh, respective to the size of the tree, okay? Uh, and so here, this, the, the size of the tree is 2 to the n, and so our height is going to be n, okay? At worst case, at any point, that's going to be the height of our tree. So that is time and space complexity, and um, let's go ahead and jump into the code here and code this out. And again, we're just using this template, so what we're going to do is we're going to create a global result. Okay, and so I'll set this to result. I'll set it to a counter zero. Then we'll have our depth first search helper. Okay, and this will be i, nums, target, and uh, a slate. I'll call it running sum. Okay, let me make sure I got that. Okay, and so now what do we want to do? We want to have our base case. Okay, so what is our base case? Um, if i is going to equal nums.lang, that means we're at the leaf level, what do we want to do? We want to check if running sum equals target. Okay, and if it does, all we want to do is increment our result. And then we return out of there. Okay, and now we're going to have our depth first search recursive helper. And so we want a positive, include positive, and then we want to include negative. Okay? So how do we do this? We're going to add onto our running sum. We can do a plus equals nums at i. And then we pass this into our, uh, our, our depth first search. We'll increment i, pass in our nums, pass in our target, and pass in our running sum. Okay, and then we can we just want to remove that from the running sum as we go back up the tree. Okay, and then we want to just pretty much do the same thing for include negative. However, what we want to do here is, let me just zoom out here so, it's, so you can see the whole thing. Uh, what we want to do here for negative is just go ahead and switch the signs here. All right, and now we're going to run our depth first search. I will be zero, nums, target, and our running sum will start at zero, and then we return result. Okay, and so that's it. That's it, it's not too bad. And you can see that the code here, this code right here, like the base case, depth first search recursive helper, include, exclude, or include two different things, um, that is just 
it's taken straight from this depth first search backtracking template that I'm using to solve every other problem in this playlist. So if you're still confused about this, definitely recommend checking out these other videos. It's a very powerful thing to really have a handle on because you can solve a lot of problems that are dealing with any permutations, subsets, combinations really quickly and easily. All right, let's just go ahead and run this, make sure everything works. Okay, and we're good. Okay, and so that is, that is leak code number 494, target sum. Uh, it's a great question, it's really fun, and, and it's not too bad to solve. It's just make sure you understand conceptually what's happening with these, so you just don't wanna rote memorize this because it's, it's just not gonna work that way. You really wanna understand what's happening under the hood. Uh, but once you do get that, once that connection is made, uh, it's, it's, it's quite magical, you know, because you can solve a lot of other problems really quickly. Okay, that's 494, target sum. Hope you enjoyed it, and I will see everyone on the next one.